Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is April 2nd, Monday, 2018. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. Let's get right into it. Take a look at our space weather conditions first. Our solar wind speed sitting at 416.6 kilometers per second with a density of 4.4. Take a look at our sunspot. Guess what? It decayed today. AR2703 started off strong after seeing a little bit of a C-class flare on April 1st. It has since decayed. We are back down to sunspot zero, starting a new stretch of spotless days. Now the total is 53 days already for 2018, more than halfway than what we had last year for the entire year. KP indices are sitting at a one with a 24 hour max at two, so no chance of any kind of geomagnetic activity at this time. And I want to get your attention here to the coronal hole that we are looking at now at spaceweather.com. Let's get a better look at it here. First, I want to take a look at the sunspot that kind of decayed. Let's watch it as we, uh, I want to show the, uh, there was a, uh, a slight flare up right before it decays. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you guys. Get a better look at it. And I think right there is probably the C flare. And right after that C flare, you see it just kind of sparking out and finally decaying away to nothing as it is no longer named uh, Sunspot Air 2703. But back to um, the topic at hand, and that is this corona hole that we have coming up the the gash that we saw in mid-march is returning now and will be earth facing within the next couple of days now this was the coronal hole that started the long duration of solar wind speed uh, and we saw an increase somewhere between 450 and right now we i don't think we got any higher than the 650s so nothing nothing huge and uh, it was a peak wind of 650 kilometers per second uh, but mainly we stayed in the 500s, 550 and up. But here we have, once again, this coronal hole that we saw in mid-March. It is approaching us now, so we will keep our eyes open for any um, update and activity from this. Also, I wanted to check the KP indices and the proton flux as well, just to show you um, after that little C-class flare. There you go, your proton flux. It briefly touched in the C-class area, and that was between the 1st and 2nd of April, so more chances that was gonna happen somewhere probably in the evening. And after that, things just quieted off. It's like someone turned a switch off. Take a look at our TSI readings. Now, we've had problems um, with the other data that we were following, which was for some reason 0.5 higher on the TSI measurement. So. When we last checked the TSI back on March 12th, it was a 1361.1.70, I believe. And if we look at it now, bear with me folks, here is the 12th right there. Okay, so <clears throat> I said it was 1361.1, uh, somewhere in that area. This is the reading that it would have been at if it was 0.5 lower. So 1360.7 was the last time that we were able to give you an update. And as of right now, today, we are sitting at 1360.64. So we've only dropped a value of total of 0 0.06 since um, overall since March 12th. But if you look back at the 16th, uh, we've seen a, a bigger dec decrease in TSI as values were right in the 1360.57 range and then gradually worked itself back up but really here in the last several days of tsi it's been back and forth up and down by 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 so nothing too spectacular in the tsi readings let's go over to grandsolarminimum.com i highlight a few articles every now and again uh the april snow i'll go back to that here in a little bit wanted to talk about um, ocean temps. We briefly talked about it earlier, um, on, I think it was on uh, Thursday before we went out, or it might have been Saturday. 
Ever since ocean temps peaked in January 2016, we've seen a steady decline. In fact, we are almost as low as we were in the last minimum in 2008, and we only have just begun the grand minimum. Uh, now, thanks to the Starman channel on YouTube, his useful teachings has alerted me to these temps and has explained how all this works. He told me that he's observed rising and falling temps, but what he hasn't seen before is the drastic drop that we just witnessed in the North Atlantic. It's something to keep our eyes on. And here is an article that I wanted to direct everyone to, if the link works for us. Gotta love lies. Okay, here we go. Science Matters, and the entire article is here at this website here. Uh, the link is in the website and should be in the description. But this gives you the entire overview of ocean temperatures. And I was looking at this earlier, and what I found uh, kind of amazing to me is the, the tropics, where the tropics are here, the light blue, the teal blue color. And it looks like to me, like the most steepest on the most free fall decline right now that we've seen is the tropics. Uh, just by basing it off looking at this graph from the rest of these values here, uh, it looks like the tropics have dropped, in my opinion, the, the steepest. But like I said, we are keeping our eye on the North Atlantic temperature anomaly as well. But I found this article very, very useful, and I wanted to bring it up in tonight's show. That way, everybody, if you get a chance, take a look at this. Uh, this will help you understand not only are we cooling down in the atmosphere, but our ocean temps are now starting to show that as well. All right, and Fiji, we had a cyclone there today. Josie, over 70 roads are closed and 35 evacuation centers have been activated for, near, for nearly 2,000 people. Unplanned power outages were also one of the challenges that were faced here. Uh, this storm brought heavy downpours and very little wind. In the comparison to Winston in 2016, Winston killed 40 as, as Josie only took four lives. With Winston, there was more wind than there was rain. Uh, Winston was rated a Category 5. Josie was only a Cat 1, but did damage with major flooding. And I also provided the link here as well. It takes you to watchers.news. A uh, little side note here for this area. I don't know if it was this particular area, but Fiji and part of the southern part of their islands did experience a small quake out in the middle of the ocean at a 6.1. So very, very active uh, region right now as far as weather and earthquakes go. Of course, we know Papua New Guinea and that area as well uh, is very active. So far today, thankfully, it's been quiet. Nothing over or no 6.0s from that region today. And the numbers from RoySpencer.com are out. And this is one of the things that I really watch. I have followed this since last year. And along with the SST values that I've been showing everybody in the ocean, this is the lower atmosphere global anomaly uh, that Roy Spencer keeps track of. Now, a lot of you will go back to 1979 and say, well, that line looks like it's going up. And you're right. Up until 2016, we were warming. And after 2016, the warming has stopped. And the graph clearly shows that. And right now, we are seeing a decline in this anomaly. Now, for the month of February, we were at plus uh, 0.20 Celsius. And now, March, we are at plus 0.24 Celsius. So it went up a 0 0.04. I don't call that much of a rise or decrease either way. Uh, January's numbers were a 0.23 Celsius. So we haven't seen more than a, a 0 0.01 rise in temperature in the, in the lower atmosphere over the past 90 days. So right now we're just kind of maintaining where we are. But if you look at the graph, you can clearly see we are starting to be on the decline. And since 2016, we've had one sudden rush of 0.63, and that was back in October of 2017. Most of the summer, uh, June was in the lower 20s. July was at uh, plus 0.27. And then it kind of climbed up in August in the 40s. And out of uh, nowhere, October was a, a surprising plus 0.63 Celsius degrees. But um, overall, it stayed between the 20s and 40s in the values. And right now, we are holding steady at plus 0 0.24 degrees Celsius. I have the link in the... Uh, grandsolarminimum.com next to this story here where I do a little write-up on it. Uh, please go check this out. 
again, this is just something else that we like to gauge uh, how to monitor the climate. And I don't think there's anything better than to look at, especially guys like this guy here, Roy. Mr. Spencer uh, puts a lot of work into this and putting this graph together shows you the time that it takes to, to be able to witness these events right now. And this is a very slow process. And um, I look at this as my monthly Christmas present. I know it sounds weird, but uh, this is the best way, in my opinion, right now, along with watching ocean temperatures, how to monitor uh, temperature change and the changing climate itself. All right, we're moving on here. Miserable Easter weather in the UK. Uh, hopefully everybody had a great holiday weekend. Even with the bad weather that was experienced in the UK, the MET office warned citizens across the region that heavy downpours could leave cars stranded and planes grounded as rounds of snow are also expected in the region. As of 8 a.m. today, 157 flood alerts and 16 flood warnings have been put in place across Britain. Uh, they're expecting heavy rain, five yellow we uh, weather warnings issued in the Met office as well. Swaths of Britain and snow was expected across the country as well. So they were expected uh, 77 millimeters of uh, moisture to hit uh, Wales, England, Northern Ireland. Flooding remains a threat for Southwest England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Much of England will be covered in snow. Go ahead and take you over to mirror.co.uk uh, thank you Mari she dug this one up for me this morning and I thought this was uh, interesting to share as well for our viewers this is probably one of the most significant weather systems or storms that's uh, in place right now I haven't seen this kind of damage from a storm here lately so um, lots to look at snow rain flood uh, just a little bit of everything in that region. So if you get time, go ahead and go to our website, click on the link for more details and for more uh, stats on this particular storm. And then here we have a little article, another another one, I believe, Mari, you brought this to my attention as well, the oldest snapshot, 173-year-olds today, 173 years old today. Let's try that. Uh, this marks the 173rd birthday of this snapshot taken by this taken um, of the sun. The photo was taken by, and I'm not even going to uh, try to pronounce this name here, but these two guys here did this back in April 2nd of 1845. Uh, I had included the article here. Here's an insert. kind of talks about the first few images that we had of our corona and, you know, about solar cycles were starting to be a little bit more clear as well this is just an interesting article on uh the history of how we observe the sun and how we've studied it throughout time uh watching sunspots and corona and filaments and everything like that and i know just from mari we have an h alpha telescope and looking through that um, really changes a lot of things when you see it on the internet but then when you look at it with your own eyes through the uh, H-alpha and you could actually see the filaments you could see the sun actually doing its thing um, you know that's that's a th for me anyway I'm a geek I guess but it's a thrilling experience to be able to witness that with your own eyes but I urge everyone to go ahead and check this article out it's just a little bit of history on how our sun was observed and monitored back in those days. And let's go over here back to watchers. We got a couple of earthquakes to talk about. Um, I'll briefly touch on these. A strong earthquake measuring 6.8 on the Richter scale hit Bolivia at 1340 UTC, April 2nd, 2018. Now the depth of this was very deep, 346 miles. Um, earthquake can have a low humanitarian impact based on the magnitude and effect of the population and their vulnerability. There's 120,000 people living with 100 kilometers within this area. Only about 9,000 people were estimated to feel the weak shaking of this earthquake. And the one thing I really like about this article, uh, well put together, very explanative about this was a minor situation. There, here is a chart with some Roman noodles. You see the two. A number two here more twos and some ones and down here in the legend it shows you uh, you know 9,000 people felt weak 
162,000 didn't feel this. And of course, anything after that, light, moderate, strong, very strong, severe, violent, extreme, of course, there wasn't any reports of any of that. So a lot of times you see that 6.8, and it just it just depends on where these uh, you know, where these earthquakes are actually located before we could assume if it was a damaging one. It may look impressive when you first get the report, but uh, I appreciate articles like this that go into depth that show us the magnitude, no pun intended, of these earthquakes. So, And then also briefly bring up the 6.1 earthquake that hit the south of the Fiji Islands today. Uh, a strong earthquake registered by the USGS as an M61 hit south of the Fiji Islands today at 5.57 UTC time. Now, this one was only about 83 kilometers deep, which is 51.9 miles. This also says 86,000 people were estimated to feel the weak shaking of this earthquake. And again, another great example of you know, letting us know the severity of this this was nothing major again this was just an area where it, it just didn't affect many people in the population so again bravo to watchers.news for bringing us the truth and uh, reporting on these things i find it crazy that we don't ever hear about earthquakes in the mainstream media nightly news or even the weather channel um just surprises me there's so much going on right now in that particular category and we don't hear enough about it Mets Phillies are snowed out tonight. Philadelphia, the game is going to be played there. They have rescheduled it for a doubleheader on July 9th. But more interesting enough, the Yankees were also snowed out today. Now, this one's a little bit more um, of a big deal to talk about. And the reason for that is that this was the first time that the Yankees have actually had their game canceled due to snow. First time since 1982. They broke a record. Uh, we have now over 15 inches of snow for the entire season for New York. And also, they got 5.5 .5 inches of snow, which ranks 7th on the all-time record list for this date. So, Or actually, for April snow... This snowfall ranked number seven. Uh, again, 1982 was the last time that we had a game snowed out in New York. And uh, I do believe that the Yankees will possibly be delayed as well tomorrow as there's rain in the forecast. So they will probably not get to play. They were supposed to be off tomorrow, but because of the cancellation today, they're scheduled to play tomorrow. Uh, it looks like they might be pulling a doubleheader on Wednesday. and could be the possibility here. But I just uh, wanted to report, we are early in the baseball season, but it's not uh, usual to see two snow outs in one day, especially. All right. So we just got done talking about a few things with ocean temps. And today I just, I'm going to start something new. When we go to Tropical Tidbits, thanks to the star man, this is something I want to monitor now. Uh, and that is the North Atlantic temperature anomaly. And right now, since it's been brought to my attention, it's leveling out. It's at a negative point a negative 0.21 right now and it's been that way for a few days so it looks like it's leveling out but if you look at the history right after it drops it levels back out a little bit and then drops again so question is will it make that turn again in a few days we'll have to just wait and see snowfall i got to show you guys two maps here this map that i'm going to show you right now is the 24 hour snowfall or wait is that this one let me double check let me make sure i got the right one okay yep so let's go back here this will start off on april 2nd okay now this is totals in other words this map is showing us how much snow is going to fall from april 2nd until I believe this map goes until the 12th and I'll pause this for you as well this is really important guys okay so here we are it goes all the way out to April 12th earlier today I thought uh, southern West Virginia northern North Carolina we're gonna be dealing with lots of snow this snow line has been drifting up north all day today uh, it started off very early in the deep south and has progressed upwards since but what this map shows us here, folks, is 
the amount of snow that has fallen from the sky and accumulated since April 2nd. In other words, this map does not account for melted precipitation. So obviously, if we would let this run out till the end of the month and say this was March, you're going to see a lot of high values on snowfall total. So this don't get this confused as if this is going to all come in the next three to four days. This is a 10 day outlook of snowfall. Still very impressive for the month of April. I'm going to admit that. But just wanted to make sure that we're all clear that that is just the total amount of snow that we're to expect in the next 10 days. Now, here is the snowfall as it happens per 24 hours. And we'll watch how it moves. Across the Great Lakes into the Northeast. And again, I was looking at this earlier and this line was definitely a lot further south than what it is now. But this goes out to April 12th as well. Now, what we do see, unfortunately, is consistency here with wave after wave of snow. But what I like here at the very what I like here at the very end of this forecast is that earlier today we had chances for heavier snow to build up in the northern plains on the 12th, and I'll try to pause it real quick when we get to the 12th. This has changed. This is an improvement. A big improvement. I paused it right there. As you, if you guys notice, when we went into the 11th, some of that blue dissipated pretty quick. So this is a good sign. Earlier today, this swath that I'm going over right now with my cursor was actually in the purple. So as the hours go by, the chances of snowfall going closer into mid-month, hopefully, is starting to decay as this storm chart is kind of, to me, it's directing us that hopefully the snow machine is getting ready to be turned off as this is this coming week into later this week. As it goes out of the weekend, we still have a healthy chance of snow through early next week. And as we finally get to about Tuesday, Wednesday, the snow starts to get a little bit lighter. No more of those purples and, and bright pinks and whites anymore. So that's good. Um, and the other good news about even though we do have a lot of snow, and I'll go back to the total accumulation over the next 10 days, even though we have all this snow on the ground right now, that doesn't mean that this is going to be here very long, folks. We are in April, but I will show everybody, too, the temperatures as well. But the good thing about this, the ground hasn't stayed frozen. Now, there's been rumors as well about this weekend of a possible nor'easter. And I'll go ahead and start the forecast right here. And let's pause it right here. Now, I guess you could say that this low-pressure system would favor what a nor'easter would do. But two things about nor'easters. One, they usually rake up the east coast and, go, and just hug the coast and goes out to the northern Atlantic. This storm right here does not originate anywhere near the south. So that's one thing it doesn't have going for itself. And if we take a look over here at this map, this is pretty much the Atlantic Ocean. And what we would need for a nor'easter is one of these high pressure systems that I've got my cursor over to be hanging out somewhere up here. And it has to be up here for several days. It can't just be for a couple of hours. That storm does not have that pressure system to grab onto to rake the coast like we've seen in March where we had four new Easter's and one in January. And I'll go ahead and when we get around back to the 8th of April, I'm gonna pause this and we'll see if we can find maybe where there might be a possible high pressure system that's sitting close to Greenland that would help us favor this situation. Here, I'm going to stop it at the fifth. That high pressure system right here in the middle of the Atlantic, that's exactly where it should be right now. So let's see what happens on the sixth. Moving out into the sixth, still staying out in the middle of the Atlantic. And by the eighth, we see that system already forming its way up to sea. So right now, unless we have some kind of drastic change in our pattern with our high pressure system, it does not look favorable for any kind of nor'easter to develop from this coming storm that's going to be happening uh, between Tuesday and Thursday of this week. Like I said, it does look impressive, but it just doesn't have the same type of ingredients to form an actual nor'easter along the nor'east. But with that being said, right now the storm is just now getting kicked up. Tuesday, you see it's all over Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. You guys are going to be dealing with severe weather. Now, they're forecasting tomorrow right here, a severe outbreak right where you see the cursor. We are going to see severe weather from Louisiana 
all the way to the Tennessee Valley, Middle Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama. You guys will be faced with some severe weather. Ohio as well, and that's going to come right around overnight hours. So I know in Southwest Ohio, they got somewhere around a couple inches of snow on Sunday. Tuesday, you guys are looking at 70 degrees for a high and severe thunderstorms overnight, possibly tornadoes as well. On the back end of this system is snow, and it cools us off here in the northeast. And it looks like we will get some light lake effect snow. Nothing major here in uh, the Buffalo area. Look at the northwest. More moisture coming in, of course, for them. This is a continuing cycle. This is interesting. By Friday of the weekend, most of New York will see some moderate snowfall. This looks like the three to five inch range. Nothing major, but again, uh, for this area, it's not unusual to see this kind of snow. But looking back here in the middle part of the country, this is where this storm system really gets its act together. And as we go through Saturday on the 7th, we could be dealing with a possible icing event in Illinois, parts of Missouri, and possibly even southwest Indiana as well. So we are going to be very, very alert about this upcoming storm this weekend as we are on Saturday. And there's two pockets of heavy precipitation. Looks like southern Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, you guys are going to get some more snow very heavy snowstorm on the east coast but this moves off into the atlantic this was where people thought maybe that would have been a nor'easter and yes had this system continued to move the way it's moving right now this is where the high pressure system would take that low and rake it up the coast of the east coast but since we do not have that high pressure system in place we are looking at this storm to run off into the middle of the ocean with that high pressure system waiting for it and then by Sunday, look at this, just a day later, we still got snow chances again in the Great Lakes, Ohio, the northern part now. The southern part got the snow on the 6th. Now they're getting rain on the 9th. Heavy precipitation as it develops through Monday of next week. Again, a chance for snow early next week for western New York, Pennsylvania, New England, that whole entire northeast corner, again, looking at more snow chances. And again, in the south, we're probably going to be dealing with more severe weather and flooding. Northwest, a little bit of a break before they bring in our next system for us. It's typical. I think the folks at uh, Region X Radio are just throwing all this moisture right across the country. So I'm going to go ahead and blame Region X Radio for all the... It's their fault for all this rain and snow. So <laughs> hello to all the listeners out there at Region X Radio, by the way. But as we move through this snow system, I mean... Look, we're looking at April 13th, April 14th, still chances of snow in the Northeast, still chances of snow in the Northern Plains. And I don't know what's going on in the South, but it looks like every two to three days. Now that's interesting. The 17th, this storm system that goes up the coast is takes a very unique uh, position. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. That's an all rain event right now. So we will keep our eyes on this. But that's almost 20 days away, folks. And, you know, uh, it's one thing to go out 10 days, but to try to get someone ready for a storm that might not happen for 20 days is we've seen how fast. Just today, I've seen the snow line move from Georgia all the way up to northern Virginia in just a matter of seven hours today. So, um, again, it's good to be alert. But And the temperature right now, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to let me go very far. Oh, it is. Great. So we see a lot of temperatures in the southwest, spring-like, heating up a little bit. North is still battling the cold. And, you know, as the daytime, you see that warm line go up. But as the nighttime temperatures, you see all this Arctic cold air coming in from Canada. And by the way, I wanted to mention before I forgot, Lincoln, Illinois, broke a record low temperature yesterday. They got down to negative one degrees, and it was a very weird situation because other cities surrounding it were in the single digits, but this area in particular dropped all the way down to negative one. And this record is worth mentioning. Uh, I believe they broke it by 20, 21 degrees, and it's a very, very old record. In fact, I think it was the coldest on any re April record they've ever had. So uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, you're getting ready to see negative one temperatures. And I believe that was also, there was another streak up there as well. But I mean, this is April folks, negative one for the low in Illinois. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready for spring. 
But looking at the future cast, it looks like the cold air is going to stick with the northeast and the northern plains. Spring is trying to happen, trying to push its way up north, but that cold air from Canada is still going to be persistent. Uh, I'm just surprised by the end of the month, let's hope. And I, I was saying this earlier last week, last time we looked at the GFS at the end of the run, this is what it looked like. So now it's going to be cold. Again, these are just something to look at, to be aware of. This is not going to happen to say on the nail, but it's always good to have that outlook of the possibility. And right now, this is the way the weather is shaping up to be. So we'll just keep our eyes on this and hopefully uh, we can get some springtime planting in here ASAP. All right. I think with that being said, I think I've covered everything tonight. Mari, did I skip anything tonight or? No, I think we covered most of it. Uh, Henrik actually said something interesting in the chat earlier. He said that uh, Denmark broke a hundred year record for snow over Easter time. Oh, wow. So I thought that was interesting. We got all, so we got just a, gr a lot of great people in the chat. So just a shout out to y'all. Thanks for coming out and hanging out with us for this update. We really appreciate every single one of you. Yeah, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, please like and share, and we will talk soon.